How many FUE grafts would I need to restore my hairline? I lost the hair around my peaks in my early 20s. I'm 30 now. It hasn't worsened much since then. The miniaturized hairs have been like that for years. My hairline looks nearly identical to the hairline my grandfather had through most of his adult life until he lost it all in his 70s. So I suspect I should be able to keep what I have. However, I'd like to restore what I've lost. Approximately how many FUE graphs would I need to do that? Thank you. Thank you for your question. You've noticed a progression of hair loss along your hairline uh, into your 30s, which you believe began starting in your 20s. And um, you've looked at your family history and expect that there will probably be a slow progression uh, based on f other family members. So your question is, how many grafts will you need? Well, I think to another level of this question should be is, what will happen should your hairline continue to recede, even with those grafts in place? This is a very common issue in hair restoration surgery, in that you may try to get a large number of grafts. In our practice, we basically do an average of anywhere from 1,500 to 2,000 hairs in a session. And this is all dependent on the donor density in terms of how many hairs per square centimeter there is in the strip. Now, even if you're doing follicular unit extractions or FUEs, well, it still means that you have to get a certain number of hairs. So even if they're doing punches and removing those individual hairs, which are supposedly scarless, but we know in our practice we see a lot of patients who have had FUEs done elsewhere where there are a lot of scars, regardless, there's still a critical number you need. Now, in order to reach that number, whether you have an FUE transplant or an FUT transplant, you still need a certain number of hairs moved. Now that is fine as long as you don't progress. Unfortunately, for most men, progression of hair loss is inevitable, especially if they're not using any medical therapy, such as the use of finasteride, to reduce DHT. So I'm going to introduce you a little bit to a concept that we do in our practice, um, being a hair restoration specialist for over 10 years and being a leader in the field of regenerative medicine as it applies to hair restoration, I can certainly speak with a lot of authority in this matter. In the past several years, I have actually quantified and developed a method of preventing the progression of hair loss as well as reversing the thinning of hair using a material called extracellular matrix. Now this extracellular matrix is based on a wound healing concept and serendipitously it was figured out that some critical elements of hair loss, which is the progression of thinning, seems to be reversed. And from studies that were based in the University of Pennsylvania as well as Yale University, I essentially have theorized that what we're doing is we're restoring progenitor cells which make the hair and are noted to be absent in the hair, or I should say the scalp, of balding men as well as the activation of the dermal papilla cells which signal the bulge area of the hair follicle to begin this hair growth cycle. It's all about cells and signals and this is very leading edge stuff because it's been developed in the laboratory side in the past three to four years, whether it's in Yale, University of Pennsylvania, University of Tokyo. But essentially, our hair regeneration system, we inject this extracellular matrix with platelet-rich plasma as well as other enhancing elements and literally reverse the thinning of the hair. So many of our patients who are, quote, thinning and receding as you are, will very often choose to do the injection first, 
see how the results are, and then at about a year, we strategically decide how to fill in some areas which couldn't be salvaged by the injection. I'd like to, tell, I'd like to explain to my patients this way. You have a limited bank and you want to spend the, the currency wisely. And so looking in the back of the scalp and looking at the density, we don't want to throw all the hairs into one area and then allow receding of the hair to then make those grafts look very obvious. I'm sure you've seen people who you look at and go, oh my God, how bad are those plugs? Well, it's, not, it's usually not intentionally bad. It just so happened they had hair grafts at a certain point when they had existing hair, but eventually their hair graft stayed in place, but the hair receded and thinned out. So my suggestion to you prior to committing to doing surgery is learn more about hair regeneration and consider this as an option in your strategy. Since you already anticipate maybe having a very slow progression, you might be able to restore a lot of those thinning hairs before you move forward with surgery and you may also be comfortable enough that you won't consider need to consider having surgery. So I realize that I've added something new to the uh, to the concepts that you're you're learning about in terms of surgery, but I think hair regeneration is a very key element to the future of treating hair loss. So I hope that was helpful and thank you for your question. Mm -hmm.